Hey guys, Reggie here with Appomattox River Company. Uh, I'm here today with the new Wilderness Systems Attack 120. Some of y'all have been patiently waiting for a review on this boat. It's a couple of quick reviews, uh, but nothing going over the entire boat with the exception of a couple from ICAST. Uh, so we'll also, we're going to do that and then we'll also answer a few questions. Some of y'all posted questions that haven't really been answered on social media. Uh, I'm going to try my best to answer them. There's only about three or four of them. And then if y'all have any questions, comment on this and I will get back to you as soon as I can with the answers. If I don't know them, I'm going to contact Wilderness and see uh, if they can give me some answers. So real quick, uh, some features about the boat is it is a 12 foot kayak. It is 12 foot 3 inches. It is 35 inches wide. It is going to be stable enough to stand on. Uh, someone asked me earlier today, with the seat being this high, this was a general question to, to kayaks like this, with the seat having a high position, is it more likely to flip? Now, when you have it in the high position, your center of gravity does change. So yes, you do have a higher probability of flipping in this position rather than the low. So pretty much the rule that I go by is if I'm fishing big open water, uh, like the Chesapeake Bay, I fish a lot, big lakes or rapids, depending on what class, class ones and twos, I'll still have them high, but anything bigger than two, there's some threes that I go down in one four. If I go down stuff like that, I drop into the low position, just change the center of gravity. It makes it a little bit more stable. Now when you're in the high position, regular river floats, class ones, I'll keep it the high. You can see, you can, you can tell a huge difference from just this few inches. You're going to see a lot more water, you're going to see a lot more fish, a lot more submerged structure. And it's also easier to stand from this position. You notice this boat does not have a stand assist strap. It's fairly easy to stand up in this boat. Now, if you wanted to mount a stand assist strap, uh, there's plenty of places where you can do that. Uh, it is not necessary to do. So, high position little bit more fishability from it. Uh, really, really cool feature about the boat is the flex spot. So with this boat, you're going to be able to have it like this where you can have your electronics mounted on it. Uh, you'll put your battery on the inside and then you can mount your transducer on the very bottom. And then at the end of the day, when you're done fishing, you just release the buckles, pull the whole thing out, and lock it up in your vehicle. So if you're doing like a long long distance trip or traveling out of town, you might stop at a rest stop or something or a restaurant. You're not going to want to leave, even though your electronics might be inside, you're not going to need to leave them inside there or take the time at the boat ramp to disconnect everything. There can be a lot of wires to some of them. So with this, just unbuckle it, lock it up in your vehicle, good to go. Set, second thing you can do is you can actually mount a motor inside of there. Uh, Wilderness Systems has the Helix HD motor drive, which would mount right in there, and then you're now motor powered. The uh, front hatch here. Now with this boat, you really don't have any internal storage, but what you do have is this hatch up here has some scupper plugs in there, so you can put like soft plastic, some tackle, stuff like that in there, a little bit of tools. Or even a dry bag with just a change of clothes if you're going on camping. You sh if you're going by yourself and you pack light, you can fit a tent in here, your sleeping bag, some food, stuff like that. You can fit in here. And then you have plenty of space in the back to, to put other stuff as well. You can also fill it up with ice, put some fish in there. It's a great spot to, to bring your catches back to land. And then you also have this paddle holder right there. You just very easily slide your paddle in place. It's not going to go anywhere. Up front, all the way, all the way up front, you have this threaded insert. Now you can do it. For, you can use it for multiple. Use it for multiple different things. Uh, some people will put a ball there or something to put an anchor on there. Uh, you can rig up an anchor system instead of using an anchor trolley. Just use a straight line. Drops off the front. What I'm going to use it for is I'm going to utilize the Ram Tough Tube and I can mount my GoPro on it and then I just screw it in place. 
And if you all see my Facebook page, I posted a couple pictures last week uh, of shots from this GoPro shooting at the boat. You can see the entire boat. You can see a good fan to the sides. So this is going to be a really cool shot to get the whole experience of you casting. Uh, you might be able to get some blow-ups if you're fishing off the side of the boat. But then when you bring that fish in, holding it up, you're going to get some really awesome shots on that. The other spot that I'm using for my camera mount is this spot right here. So what I did, again, a couple weeks ago, I had my camera there hanging off the side so I get some release shots. What I have here today is instead I have the Zuka tube and I have a parking pole. And I could just jam that into the ground and now I'm anchored. Uh, with this kayak, you can also mount two power poles. Right here in the back. Now, this, this is going to lead to another question. People have asked, where are the mounting plates so you can mount the power pole? Uh, from what I've heard from Wilderness, it's going to be probably early spring when those are released. They're working on it now. But once those are out, you'll be able to mount a power pole here. You can mount one on this side, or you can do double, and then you can also mount a rudder right here. Now, if you are about to purchase an attack and you want to put a power pole on there now, sorry, fish running up. Uh, if you want to put a power pole on there now, you can actually mount one right here behind the seat and it'll just go right through those scuppers. And there's no mounting plate needed for that. Uh, so you can do that now. Uh, what I was saying before about the rear tank well, this is the Yak Attack Black Pack. I can slide this all the way back. I still have enough room behind the seat for a soft sided cooler, a uh, small tackle box setup. You have plenty of room back here. Most kayaks are going to fit maybe a 25 quart cooler. You could possibly get away with a 35 quart cooler to, to stay back here. What you also get is you have little bungees on the side, perfect to put your Play-Doh boxes. So if you are having camping gear back here, you can still take a couple tackle boxes uh, and you can just put them right there on the side. You can also fit them underneath the seat. Uh, that's going to be out of the way. So you have a few other spots where if you're taking camping gear, you're going to still be able to take a good amount of fishing gear with you. You get traps on both sides. So this one I have a busy pole from Yak Attack. You can also put another camera mount. Uh, the Yak Attack Boomstick works perfectly right there. You get over the head shots. And then these holes right here, we've had customers come in and ask, what are those for? Um, what those are for is the 3D seat. So what the 3D seat is, it's another seat that mounts onto the boat that it'll actually, it's front mounts up here and the back mounts here. And the seat's going to be right about here. So instead of you being seated the whole time, you can actually stand. You just take this seat, slide it off. And stand and you kind of just sit back and lay like kind of on a bass boat. That's going to be a perfect way to, for sight casting. Uh, I have a buddy who lives down in Texas and he's in the 140. I haven't had him try it in the 120, but he can actually stand on top of that seat and not only cast, but he can land bass from that. That shows how stable these boats are. That if you can stand, it's about this high off the boat. If you can stand that high, that's a stable kayak. So, um, this is the, again, this is the Attack 120. Retails for about uh, $16.49. Sorry, not my boat, so I taped it instead of bolting it in. Uh, yeah, you also have plenty of track space. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, from the seat, the seat is actually on tracks. So you can slide it forward and back. You can also, if you just have a set position where you know you're going to leave this position and never move it, then you can utilize these tracks for uh, either gear tethers, for fish grips, paddle holders, rod holders, stuff like that. I'm, I fish rivers and lakes, so I'm going to be sliding that seat forward and back. So I'm going to put mine up on this gear track. Uh, the way these paddle holders work is you just take your paddle. Perfect for standing. When I'm standing, I'll just bend, bend down. There you go, that paddle's in there. It's not going to move. Uh, you, it's not hard to take out, very easy, but it is very secure when it's in there. But then when you need it, just grab the paddle, pull out. Also, with these high-low seats, 
The paddles that are generally going to work more, if you're going in between sizes, like you're going to be dropping the boat down or the seat down and then raising the seat back up quite often, a paddle that is adjustable is going to save you a lot of money. Uh, it, the boat's going to paddle differently in a low position than it is in a high, so you're going to want a paddle that, like if you're in a high position, you're going to want a longer paddle. So instead of you having to buy two paddles, just buy one that extends, there you go. You also mount rod holders for all the fishing rods in there, and any other gear that you want to mount on those tracks. Uh, ah, one more thing right up here. So earlier I talked about if you wanted to mount the motor drive right here. If you have the motor in there, where are you going to put your fish finder? Uh, what you can do is, let me move this out of the way. You can unscrew this piece right here, and then unscrew this one. Sorry, it takes a while. And you can actually mount your transducer to the bottom of this, drop that back in place, cover that back up, and then you can mount your screen right on top of here. Still running your motor, your screen's there, you can have both of them and you're not sacrificing anything. Also, if you want to run two transducers, you can put one in here and the second one in there. Uh, this boat is also rudder ready, so if you want to put a rudder, it's already mount, rigged up back there. Everything's hooked up, ready to go for that. You also get a, this is probably one of the coolest tiny features for this boat. Uh, when I unwrapped this thing last week, me and my boss saw this and we were both so happy that Wilderness did this. It's just put a, a bag. So in other boats, like the ride I have, you have uh, ropes inside there so you can actually attach carabiner or stuff like that to them. But having this bag makes it so much easier because you can just drop it in there, you're good to go. Uh, especially if you have a, a phone that has a waterproof case, you just throw it in there, you don't have to worry about any of the dry boxes, stuff like that. Uh, the one in the back is the same. So, some questions that people have asked, sorry. Um, I actually answered all those. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, this is the Attack 120 by Wilderness Systems. We have them for sale now uh, at paddleva.com. You can also stop by any of our three locations in Farmville. This is the Ashland location. And you can also stop by the Hampton location. Uh, and then, of course, at paddleva.com. So, check it out. Y'all have a good one.